想像してたのと違ったというか中学生ち中学生でそんなあんの半端ないんだけど何センチあんのちょ北川さん私164センチあっ178センチですすっごいいいなそっちだった What would you do if you constantly had a sexy anime waifu stripping off her clothes in front of you? You would think you're in heaven, right? Well, for Gojo, it's still a bit embarrassing, but he still does his job creating costumes. Will this love story between cosplayer and cosplay maker get spicy? Find out in today's recap of My Dress Up Darling. Juju turns down Kitagawa's proposal to do a group cosplay initially. However, when Kitagawa and Gojo offer to split the studio fees, things start to get interesting. Intrigued by the idea, Gojo decides to watch Flower Princess Blaze as part of his research. Later that night, his grandfather commends his progress and urges him to hone his tailoring and makeup skills alongside Kitagawa. The following day, Gojo arrives at Kitagawa's apartment. But he's taken aback by her dishevelled appearance. Eventually, she lets him in and suggests they watch the series together. As they sit side by side, Kitagawa realizes they're actually on a cozy home date. Just then, her stomach grumbles and Gojo offers to grab something to eat. However, Kitagawa insists on whipping up a homemade meal instead. Despite the plans going awry, Kitagawa is thrilled. When Gojo genuinely enjoys her omarich. Back at home, Gojo contacts Juju and eagerly sends her his detailed sketches. To Juju's surprise, she discovers that Kitagawa's outfit was Gojo's very first cosplay project. Before ending the call, Juju mentions that her younger sister takes her pictures and agrees to meet Gojo at a restaurant. However, when Gojo and Kitagawa finally meet Juju's shy and reserved sister, Shinju Inui, they're taken aback by her ample proportions and curvaceous figure. Shinju excitedly presents Kitagawa with the camera she uses to capture Juju's stunning pictures, launching into a detailed explanation of its various filters and settings. The group then embarks on a captivating journey to the studio, nestled within the airy confines of an abandoned hospital. Inside, Shinju skillfully demonstrates the incredible advantages of capturing backlit images to Kitagawa, leaving her utterly spellbound. Meanwhile, amidst the studio's mystical ambience, Gojo serendipitously stumbles upon a visibly frightened Juju, leading them into an intimate conversation about their individual dreams. As Juju unveils the heartfelt reason behind choosing Gojo to craft her cosplay outfit, a flood of memories rush through his mind, evoking a vivid recollection of a previous conversation with his beloved grandfather. Overwhelmed with joy, he can't contain himself and ecstatically seizes Juju's hand, causing her to unexpectedly faint in his embrace. With the school finals behind them, a sense of freedom pervades the air and Kitagawa seizes the opportunity to invite Gojo to an enchanting day at the beach. As they arrive at their sandy paradise, a cheeky seahawk swoops down, snatching away Kitagawa's burger in a brazen act of thievery. Left with only one remaining burger, they share it between them, their laughter echoing against the crashing waves. In a moment of vulnerability, Kitagawa confides in Gojo, revealing how his childhood was devoid of exploration and adventure due to his all-consuming hobby. Caught off guard by Kitagawa's revelation, Gojo is struck with a mix of astonishment and gratitude. The words hang in the air, shimmering like the glistening ocean before them as Kitagawa promises to unveil a world of wonders during their upcoming summer vacation. Suddenly aware of her unintentional forwardness, Kitagawa blushes and excuses herself, seeking a moment of solitude to gather her thoughts. In the quiet seclusion, she allows herself to indulge in a swoon of romantic possibility before capturing a photograph of Gojo. Before we continue, 
take a moment to answer the question of the day, what anime has made you emotional or cry and why? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out in a future video. Gojo and Kitagawa stride back from the store, laden with all the materials they need for the Black Lobelia outfit. As they reach their destination, Kitagawa can't contain her excitement and slyly reveals a swimsuit hidden beneath her clothes. With a mischievous grin, she turns to Gojo and wonders aloud if it would be suitable for their cosplay. Caught off guard, Gojo blushes, feeling a tad awkward, but eventually manages to reassure her that it's absolutely perfect. Relieved, Gojo's happiness shines through as he realises that Kitagawa can finally share in the delight of being helpful. Time passes and Gojo proudly presents Juju and Kitagawa with their impeccably crafted outfits. Next on the agenda is Kitagawa's makeup and with Juju's expert guidance, Gojo deftly works his magic. The trio eagerly makes their way to the hospital, anticipation coursing through their veins, eagerly awaiting the arrival of Gojo and Shinju. Finally, the dynamic duo graces them with their presence, but there's a twist. Shinju astounds the girls by sporting an incredible male cosplay outfit. In a flashback to their initial hospital visit after Juju and Kitagawa departed, Gojo's suspicions were confirmed when Shinju expressed her secret desire to cosplay as well. In response, Gojo wholeheartedly agreed to assist her and, to his delight, Shinju revealed her dream of embodying Soma, a captivating male character from Flower Princess Blaze. Taking Shinju under his wing, Gojo whisked her away to his shop where they stumbled upon a solution for her chest-related concerns, a remarkable contraption known as a bee holder. Amidst their preparations, they engaged in a heartfelt conversation, weaving their dreams and aspirations while meticulously working on Shinju's wig and makeup. Returning to the present moment, a joyous atmosphere fills the air as everyone gathers for a group picture. In the hospital, Kitagawa and the Inui sisters strike a pose for their photo shoot. Later, Juju extends heartfelt gratitude to Gojo for awakening Shinju's passion for cosplay. With the shoot wrapped up, Juju and Shinju find themselves back at home. During a candid conversation, Juju confesses her envy of Shinju's ability to flawlessly embody the characters they cosplay. Their discussion takes a delightful turn as they gleefully admire a collection of photos featuring Gojo. Meanwhile, Gojo engages in a phone conversation with Kitagawa, which triggers a tinge of jealousy within her upon learning of Shinju's visit to his house. Time passes and Kitagawa reveals her longing to cosplay as Veronica, a character with a dark complexion. They agree to explore digital techniques to achieve the desired effect. Unexpectedly, Kitagawa arrives at Gojo's house the following day, her skin completely transformed with foundation to match Veronica's unique skin tone. After a quick bath, an embarrassing moment unfolds as she playfully exposes herself to demonstrate the intricacies of the outfit. Eager to shop for him, Kitagawa takes Gojo to a clothing store. During their walk back, Gojo hesitantly admits that he won't be able to assist with the Veronica outfit. Taken aback and concerned, Kitagawa inquires about the reason and he nervously confesses that it's too revealing. A wave of relief washes over her and she teasingly pokes fun at him, ultimately agreeing to choose her future characters more thoughtfully. Kitagawa extends a spontaneous invitation to Gojo, inviting him to a manga cafe, but caught off guard, Gojo finds himself feeling a tad uneasy at the prospect of being alone with her. As they while away the time, Kitagawa eagerly suggests a captivating manga called Suchidk to Gojo, expressing her own longing to cosplay as Liz the succubus. Amidst her excitement, doubts creep into Kitagawa's mind, wondering if she can truly pull off the cosplay. However, Gojo's encouraging words provide the needed push and she resolves to give it a shot. Yet, Gojo encounters his own hurdle as he grapples with designing the outfit to match the manga's delightfully simplistic art style. As fate would have it, Gojo remains oblivious to Kitagawa's choice of venue for their photo shoot, which turns out to be none other than a love hotel. Oblivious to the hotel's nature, they venture on, 
playfully reenacting the manga's poses. In an unexpected twist, Kitagawa accidentally finds herself seated atop Gojo during one particular pose, caught off guard, their eyes lock, and in the midst of this intense moment, they overhear the unmistakable sounds of passion emanating from the adjacent room. Panicked, Gojo tries desperately to extricate himself from the compromising situation. In his haste, he reaches for Kitagawa's waist, unintentionally causing her to emit a startled moan that triggers an abrupt darkness as she inadvertently knocks the phone onto the light switch. Shocked, their gaze locks and an almost kiss hangs tantalizingly in the air. Alas, their fleeting moment is interrupted by an untimely phone call, forcing them to abandon their illicit surroundings. As they retreat to the sanctity of their respective homes, Gojo finds himself unable to shake thoughts of Kitagawa, her image firmly imprinted on his mind as he contemplates alone in his room. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out PurpleGuy6536, who commented on our Rent a Girlfriend video, I love the intro man, mostly because it has three of my favourite anime, but I loved your recap. Thanks so much for the support. In her cosy apartment, Gojo lends a helping hand to Kitagawa, deftly fixing her hair ribbons. Little did he know that a disappointing surprise awaited him. Her father had unexpectedly revoked her invitation to the summer festival due to her unfinished homework. Frustrated yet determined, Kitagawa confesses to Gojo that she has taken up modelling for a magazine, all in an effort to save up for an extravagant camera. To lighten the mood, they decide to indulge in a spine-chilling horror flick. Gojo, however, finds himself on edge as he had never ventured into this genre before. Yet, as the movie progresses, a surprising transformation takes place. Gojo's anxiety gradually fades, replaced by a newfound fascination with the intricacies of the terrifying costumes, while poor Kitagawa is left trembling in fear. In the pursuit of academic diligence, they embark on a journey to their school to retrieve Kitagawa's neglected math drills. Fate intervenes when Kitagawa accidentally slips into the pool, but fear not, in a heroic act, Gojo springs into action, swiftly rescuing her from the clutches of the water's depths. With her homework finally completed, Kitagawa extends a heartfelt invitation to Gojo, welcoming him to accompany her to the long-awaited festival. To his astonishment, she appears before him in a stunning yukata, radiating pure joy and satisfaction. Together, they bask in the brilliance of the fireworks, their gazes locked in a shared moment of enchantment. As the night winds down, exhaustion sets in, and Kitagawa's delicate feet bear the brunt of the festival's merriment, causing painful bruises from walking in sandals. Showing his unwavering affection, Gojo tenderly carries her home, cradling her in his arms, determined to alleviate any discomfort. In the comforts of their respective homes, a late night call ignites a spark between them. Kitagawa, yearning for Gojo's presence, confesses her fear after enduring another horror movie alone. The conversation meanders, blending their voices with a soft undertone of intimacy. However, the night takes its toll on Gojo, lulling him into the sweet embrace of sleep. Worried, Kitagawa's voice trembles as she realises he has drifted off, prompting her to muster the courage and declare her profound affection. She confesses to the unconscious Gojo that she loves him. Well, that's the end of season one. Hopefully, we get a season two of this sexy anime. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome anime recaps like this. Bye.